Because the Spirit knows the mind of God and he knows the will of God, it means the Spirit can intercede fully in accordance with God's will. And when we pray in God's will, we know that we have what we ask for. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 to 15 says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. Now I believe this is one reason why, when we're truly praying in the Spirit, we can pray with boldness. Because we just have that inner sense, we know, we know that we're praying the will of God. There are sometimes when I pray, and again, the words just come out. I, I know it's not, I'm not praying in my mind. I know there are times when I do pray in my mind. I can tell the difference. But there are times when words come out of my mouth, and they come out with boldness and power. That's because it's the Holy Spirit. And we can be confident. If it's the Holy Spirit, it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. But if there is prayer in the Spirit, then it means there must be prayer also. I think there are times when we're not praying in the Spirit. We're praying in the flesh. And as I said already, I, I, I notice the difference in my life when I'm just praying in the flesh and when I'm praying in the Spirit. Praying in the flesh relies on our own human ability and reasoning, our own logic. Sometimes it's just simply our own desires, which may not be God's will for us. And very often when we pray in the flesh, it requires effort. It requires effort to carry the prayer forward. Sometimes we, we, we might feel that we're praying and, and, and the prayers aren't going anywhere. The prayers just feel dead and lifeless. That might actually be an indication that we're praying in the flesh and not in the spirit. And also, I believe prayers that are simply prayed by vote can be praying in the flesh because it's become just a kind of a religion. We're just praying things automatically without them being heartfelt. I mean, I'm going to look at Matthew chapter 6 at this point. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 to 7. He also talks about babbling. 
These people are babbling like pagans. Sometimes we can go on and on in our prayers. That's not to say that spirit led prayers aren't sometimes long. That's not what I'm saying. But sometimes we can go on praying. And it, it's like, is this babbling here? I think in the, the, the Passion Translation it talks about repeating empty phrases. Again, that's religious, religiosity. Maybe praying learned prayers or imitating others, just praying a certain way because you've heard other people pray that way. Those sorts of prayers, God doesn't answer, He doesn't hear, because the hearts of those praying aren't sincere. But prayer in the Spirit, it goes to the heart of the issue. And sometimes, when you're praying in the Spirit, it may only need a few words, a few simple words. A few simple words, pray in the Spirit, inspired by God, in the will of God, they can be more effective than a whole hour of battle. So pray in the flesh, the pray in empty phrases. When we're praying, we come to God as children come to their Father. We've heard this as well. Yeah? We come to God, and God will give us the answers to our prayers because of our relationship with Him. It's not because we prayed all the right words. Again, I would encourage those of you who may be struggle to pray out in a group, in a prayer meeting. Don't worry if your prayers don't sound as eloquent as others. Don't worry if your prayer is only short and simple. What matters is that it's heartfelt, it's sincere, that you are crying out to your Heavenly Father. And if your heart is in the right place, then it may seem simple, but that prayer, I believe, is of the Holy Spirit. So pray it. When we pray in the Spirit, it brings life. It brings empowerment. We just have a sense that our prayers are going to the Father. They are accomplishing what they're intending to accomplish. Uh, I read somewhere, I can't remember where it was now, but I put the quote down. Praying the Spirit has a living quality characterized by warmth and freedom and a sense of exchange. We realize that we are in God's presence speaking to God. The Spirit illuminates your mind, moves your heart, and grants a freedom of utterance and liberty of expression. I'd rather pray two minutes in the spirit than two hours in the flesh. So how do we pray the spirit? Well, we've been learning that we are spirit. We are essentially spirit beings. We have a soul and we live in a body. But because we are spirit beings, we were designed to be in constant communion with God through fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Praying the Spirit is just part of that ongoing communication with God. I've been listening to um, some teaching by a woman called Emma Stark, uh, who heads up the Global Prophetic Alliance. And uh, I listened to um, some teaching of theirs on praying in the Spirit. And, uh, and she was talking about how we need to go into, sometimes we need to go into and pray into the, in the Spirit realm. We are spirit beings and we have, we have the ability to access this 
spiritual realm. And when we're praying, we need to go into that spirit realm. I'm going to come back to that again in a minute and explain it a little bit more, I hope. Um, but at this point, I just also want to draw your attention to the fact that not only does the Bible talk about praying in the spirit, it talks about worshipping in the spirit. In John chapter 4, verse 23, it talks about worshipping in the spirit and in truth. And I believe this is similar. Because what it says, we need to be more aware of the spiritual than we are of the physical. And there are times when we can get so lost in worship, and it's happening more and more up here, I believe. When we just get lost in worship, we forget about everything else. We forget about the physical realm, what is going on around us, or how we're feeling. We're just so caught up with worshiping God. We're taken into that spiritual realm in some way. And when you're in that place, you don't want to be anywhere else, do you? You don't want it to end very right? often. You could go on and on and on. Time almost doesn't have any... You, you don't have a sense of time even. We are bi-located. We've heard this before. We are here on Earth. We are in the world, but not of the world. We are here on the Earth. But we are also seated in heavenly places. And our spirits are in heavenly places. So I know it's difficult for us to get our heads around, but our physical bodies are here, but we also, through our spirits, we have access to the spiritual realm. And we need to be more and more aware of that spiritual realm. And the more aware we are of the spiritual realm, the more I believe it will help us to pray, and to pray effectively, pray in the Spirit. And uh, she's saying, particularly when facing difficult situations in prayer, it's important to go into the Spirit realm, to ask God to show us what is actually going on in the Spirit. Saying, God, what are you, what are you saying? What are you doing? And then we will pray for our spiritual eyes and not with our physical eyes. All we need to do is to ask God for our eyes to be open. We sing that song sometimes, Open the Eyes of My Heart. Because sometimes, for example, If we're to ask God, 
What is going on in the spirit realm? Um, God, what are you saying? What is your willingness? We might pray differently from how we would in the natural. We need you, God. We need your Holy Spirit. 